And I'm not saying when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm talking about this, I'm not saying that you have to change the world. I'm just saying that you have to change your life. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to step into your own personal power. And I'm gonna talk about the small decisions that you make, the big decisions that you make, but I'm gonna talk about how every single decision that you make in your life is based in either one of two places. Every decision that you make is either based out of fear or it's based out of personal power. So it's either fear or it's power. Those are the two places that you can make decisions from. There are no other places you can make decisions. The problem though, is that at least for me, most of my life until I realized this, is that most of my decisions were made out of fear, which is also called scarcity. I was in a scarcity mode. I wasn't raised with a whole lot. I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about growing a business or growing a podcast or growing stuff. And so a lot of my decisions that I've made in my life were based out of fear, even though I felt like I should probably make a different decision. You know, when I look back on my entire life, most of them were made out of fear. And so what I want you to think about for yourself, if you look back on your entire life and all of the things that you've done and all of the decisions that you've made, have they been based out of power, of a place of personal power and stepping into your personal power? Or have they been made from a place of fear, of scarcity? Have they been made from a place of, oh yeah, I won't do this because it costs too much money. I won't invest into myself because it costs more money. I won't start that business because I know it's gonna cost me money to do. You know, those are based out of fear. And when we talk about fear, you have to realize that fear is a good thing and fear is also a bad thing because fear will show you the edge of your comfort zone and show you where you're on the edge of your comfort zone. So if you wanna push past it, you continue to keep going. Or fear, if you listen to it, is a bad thing because it will keep you in the exact same place that you're in. And fear was a great thing for our ancestors. It kept them alive 100,000 years ago when they had to be fearful of possibly walking by a bush and a lion being in there. So that fear kept our species alive. But now today, fear is actually one of the things that holds people back the most. And you may have heard me talk about it. I had a psychedelic journey a few years ago where I really realized that fear is the worst thing in the world. Because without fear, if we had no fear, there wouldn't be any wars, there wouldn't be any killings, there wouldn't be people that were looking at people that didn't look like them or act like them and, and hating them. Fear holds people back from making a true connection and really growing. But also fear holds people back from starting the business that could possibly change the world or cure cancer or be able to change global warming. They're just too fearful of actually taking that step. So if fear were not there, this place could be amazing. This could be a utopia. This could be just an amazing place that we could live in, but fear holds us back. When I look back on my life, a lot of my decisions were made in fear. What I realized is I got to a point in my life where I looked at my life and I didn't have the life that I wanted. I knew that there was more and I knew that if I wanted to create the life that I wanted to create, I would have to step out of fear. I would feel the fear, but I would have to continue do it and doing it anyways. My decisions were all made to keep me in my comfort zone and its simplest form to keep me in the exact same position that I always was in. Why does it come from fear? Because like I said, fear is the thing that kept us alive. But the part that existed in our ancestors 100,000, 200,000 years ago in their brains still exists in our brains today. It's the amygdala. It's this little tiny thing and that's where all of your fears come from. It keeps you alive. It is a great thing. But when there are no nothing to fear about, like lions attacking you or running out of food or running out of water or you know a animal attacking your child, when you have all of those gone, your brain still has the amygdala and that amygdala will then create fears that don't even exist. Let me ask you something. Have you ever had you know, a moment of silence, you're sitting around and you're quiet and your brain just immediately goes to fears. It goes to fear base. It starts making things up that don't even exist. That's what happens is a brain that's, that you don't pay attention to will automatically go to fear. So how can you stop going to fear in everything that you do? And this is why it's very, very important for you, for me, for all of us, for every single person to become very self-aware. And I wanted you to think about all of the great decisions that have happened in this world, all of the amazing things that have changed the, the course of history. Think about all of those great decisions. Now I want to ask you a question. How many of those great decisions do you think came from a place of fear? Don't worry, I'll give you a second. How many came from a place of fear? Probably none of them, right? I don't mean fear of death. I don't mean fear of like, of, of being attacked. I mean fear of, of, I don't know if I can do it. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Maybe I should do this instead. I don't think that any great business, 
any Nobel Prize winner, any of those things came from a place of fear. All of those came from some place of personal power. And these decisions are the decisions that we have that can completely change the course of our lives and the people's lives around us. And I'm not saying when I'm, when I'm, when I'm talking about this, I'm not saying that you have to change the world. I'm just saying that you have to change your life. These decisions of fear will make us play small. They will make us not live up to our potential. They will make us afraid of rejection. They will make us afraid of other people's opinions. They will make us afraid of what might happen if we step into the unknown. Those are all decisions that keep us playing small and they keep us taking the safe route and they keep us staying inside of our comfort zone. And you might be out there and you might have this amazing business idea that could completely change your life and maybe change the course of history and it's out there and you have this idea and it's there and it's so close, but there's a feeling inside of your head of like, well, what if I, what if I mess up? What if I, what if I make an embarrassment of myself? What if I make an embarrassment of my family? And those thoughts will keep you from changing the world. Now let's go on even, even smaller scale. Maybe you have this feeling of you want to go start a business and you're not sure what the business is, but you have this feeling of, I want to go start a business. But the fear is actually even keeping you from going out and trying new things. It's keeping you from going out and going to conferences that interest you to see what you can find out. That fear, if you didn't have it, could get you to start your, if you didn't have it and you started to a place of power, you could go out and you could learn something new. You could start a business and maybe that business doesn't change the course of history. Maybe it doesn't change the world, but maybe it changes your life. And if you have kids or you have a spouse or you plan on having kids and a spouse later on down the road, that will change their world. And so it's not about changing the entire world, but can you change your world, which will eventually change other people's world as well. It's also another thing of like stepping into, you know, your own personal development and investing into that. I always talk about it all the time. One of the biggest moments of my life was when I invested into my first coach and paid $500 a month. I could have not paid him $500 a month because I didn't have it because I didn't, I put it onto a credit card, but there was something inside of me that said I should do it. And that was me stepping into a place of personal power going, you know what? I don't like where I am. I don't want to be here anymore and I'm not going to be here anymore. And I'm going to do something different. That thought, that feeling completely changed the course of my life. And I wouldn't be doing what I do right now. I wouldn't be speaking to you, whether this is through a podcast, whether this is through YouTube or whether it's through Facebook or Instagram, I would not be speaking to you right now if I didn't hire that guy and that changed my life. And hopefully it's changing your life in some sort of way as well. You know, how many, how many great decisions came from a place of no risk? Oh, I'm not going to risk it. Here's the thing in life. And this is one of my favorite quotes. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything. If you don't risk anything in your life and you play your entire life safe and you play scared and you play inside of your comfort zone, you risk everything. You risk an amazing life. You risk all of the happiness and joy and the true potential and the wealth that you could get and the way that you could change your family's life by that wealth. You risk everything when you decide in your life that you're not going to risk anything. How many people do you look up to in your life? Amazing people that change the world that do you think just didn't live in their personal power? Very few, right? Probably none. How many great inventions and companies came from a place of fear? None. So what should we be focused on? We talked a lot about fear. What should we be focused on is we should be focused on our personal power, stepping into a place where we know it's going to cause the greatest growth, greatest growth for ourselves. Is it going to be easy? No. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Yes. But is it going to help us grow? Absolutely. So that is what we need to be focused on. Stepping into who you could be and ultimately who you should be more than anything else. Will there be risk? Absolutely. There's going to be tons of risks. There's going to be tons of failures. You're going to f up a lot of stuff, but that doesn't matter. What matters is who you come out on the other side. And it's the difference between your gut feeling and your brain feeling, your gut feeling and your brain. Your brain is a, and you've heard me say this a million times, your brain is designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to keep you safe. Your brain is literally a fear-based mechanism. It's what it does. It creates fear so that therefore it keeps you alive and keeps you inside of your comfort zone. But your gut feeling is that feeling deep down inside of your soul of like, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. And the tragedy of life is that too many people don't listen to that gut feeling and they don't step into their personal power. They don't step into who they could be. They don't step into their true potential. And then ultimately they get to the end of their life and they really regret that they didn't do what they ultimately should have done. They listen to fear more than they listen to their personal power. Everything that you want to do is going to require you to at some point step into a place of personal power. And you need to become very aware of when your gut feeling is pulling you towards something, when it's driving you towards something, 
or when you are coiling back and you're coming from a place of fear and you're not making that decision. And once again, I said this a minute ago, it's going to require you to become very, very self-aware of what's going on. And that's the first thing that you need to realize is that you need to become self-aware whenever you feel a certain way to take a step back, get out of the jar so you can read the label, you know, literally look at yourself as if you're a different person, take out a pen and paper and say, what am I feeling right now? You know what? I'm feeling pretty fearful. Okay. Why am I fearing fearful fear? Why am I feeling fearful right now? I'm feeling fearful because I feel like I don't want to work at my job anymore and I want to go start a business. Okay. Why does that scare me? Write down all the reasons why it scares you. It's okay to write down all the reasons why it scares you. And then you can also write down, but what if I succeed? What will happen? Oh, I could have this. I could have this. I could create this. I could impact these people's lives. I could start a charity. I could have so much money to donate. And you start to realize when you take everything out of your head and you put it onto a piece of paper that you could coil away. You could listen to the fear, but then you could fast forward 20 years from now and see what your life would look like if you decided to follow that route. So you ask yourself the question, what would my life look like if I decided to not do this? 20 years from now, if I fast forward, what will my, my, my life look like if I don't do this? I'll probably be in the same position, making a little bit more money. I'll probably not be as happy as I could be. In fact, I'll probably be less happy because I know that I'm not living up to my full potential. Okay. If I were to, to step into my personal power and decide to start this business, knowing it's going to be hard, knowing there's going to be unknowns, knowing I'm going to screw things up and I'm going to mess it up and I'm going to fail over and over again. But if I do fast forward of what my life could be like in 20 years, what could my life look like? Oh my gosh, I could impact these people. I could change my life. I could feel better about myself. I could feel, finally feel confident of what it is that I do. And when you break it down and you start to look at your life as if you're planning a business, like if you're going to start a business, you're going to have a business plan, right? And what are you going to do? You're going to have your business plan in your head? No, you're going to write down the things that you're needing to do or that you need to do to grow your marketing and grow your sales and grow your revenue and create the products. You're going to write it all down on a piece of paper. Why is it any different with planning out where your life is going? If you're thinking about your life too much, you're going down the wrong route. You need to start planning out your life. Act like it's a business. Okay, what if I do decide to go out and take this path in my life, what can my life look like? What, what challenges could come up if I go this route? What could I do to make sure that I, I mitigate the risk with all of these challenges? So therefore I can work through them. What if my mom does say this about me? Well, if she does say it about me, that's her own opinion, but I'm gonna go through this route because it feels like it's what I'm supposed to be. So that's the first thing is become very self-aware to take yourself out of the jar and read the label to put everything that's happening in your head on a piece of paper and work through them as if it was a business plan. And the second thing is to start becoming comfortable living on the edge of your comfort zone. If you've never lived on the edge of your comfort zone before, then it's going to be hard for you in the beginning. But once you've done this enough, it feels uncomfortable. Instead of it, it's, instead of it feeling uncomfortable to live on your comfort zone, it feels uncomfortable to not be uncomfortable. If that makes sense where comfort actually is uncomfortable because you know that it's not what you should be doing. You know that it's holding you back. You know that it's not giving you the life that you want. And so what you do is you actually start to find the edge of your comfort zone and you start to know what that feels like. You know what the fear popping up feels like, but you decide not to listen to it. And what you do when you get to the edge of your comfort zone, instead of backing away, is you start to lean in and go, this is showing me where I am not free. I am stuck in this comfort zone. And if I want to create something amazing in my life, I'm going to have to lean into this just a little bit. And then what I want you to do is I want you to fast forward your life and think into the future. If you continue to make decisions out of fear for the next five years, what is your life going to look like in five years? If you continue to make decisions out of fear over the next 20 years, what is your life going to look like in 20 years? Are you going to look at it and go, man, I'm so excited about this life. I'm so proud of it. My children are going to be so proud of me that the, the life that I lived in fear for the past 20 years, what would your life look like if you lived in fear for the next five years, for the next 20 years, fast forward yourself and see it. And if it's painful, let it be painful because sometimes that pain is needed for you to make a change. And then what I want you to do is I want you to start to write down what could my life look like if I stepped into my personal power for the next five years, what can my life look like if I stepped into my personal power for the next 20 years? If I leaned on the edge of my comfort zone and I pushed past it constantly and pushed past it constantly and I felt the fear, but I did it anyways, what could my life look like? And you start to plan ahead and you start to realize that if you're going to step into your own personal power, you've got to learn to work with fear. Fear is always going to be present. It's always going to be there. It's never going to go away. You just become more comfortable with it being there. It's just like that awkward person sitting in the corner of the room. It's always going to be there. 
But just because he's talking to you doesn't mean that you have to listen to him. You can put on your headphones and start going to the path that you want to. So if you want to create a life that steps into your personal power, you've got to start following it. You've got to start planning it out. You've got to become very aware when you're starting to be pulled back into fear. And then just like a business plan, write out what's going on and how you can get past it. And if you do that, that is how you create the life that you want to over the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 20 years. And until the day you die, when you get to that deathbed, you'll be proud of what you created versus not happy about what it ended up looking like. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. What, like what is actually scary about that?